New York City. What makes it great? Some may say it's the diversity, or maybe it's our iconic bridges, the towering skyscrapers, and the vast subway system. Ask any New Yorker and you'll probably get a different answer. But the one thing that everyone can agree on is that New York City has great tasting water. Today, New York's water supply is abundant and we sometimes forget that it wasn't always that way. Once upon a time, the city drew all of its water from local wells. But as the population grew, the city needed more water than these wells could supply. So in the early 1800s, engineers decided to look beyond the city limits for a new water supply. Over the next 150 years, 22 reservoirs and controlled lakes were created to collect rainwater from the pristine forested lands north of the city. These lakes and reservoirs are set in three watersheds. The Croton watershed in what is now Westchester and Putnam County was the first. The Catskill system was constructed between 1905 and 1928. And the third, the Delaware system, which features one of the longest aqueducts in the world, the Rondout West Branch Tunnel, which began construction in 1937 and was completed in the 1960s. Overseeing this vast system are the dedicated men and women of the New York City Department of Environmental Protection, who ensure that nearly over a billion gallons of clean, safe drinking water are delivered to New York City every day. Part of their daily tasks is making repairs and upgrading our aging infrastructure. DEP constantly monitors and inspects the water supply system to proactively address potential problems and ensure that there are no interruptions in service. It was during just such an inspection in 1990 when a utility worker discovered what looked like a small pond in a previously dry area. DEP soon learned that this was just above the Delaware Aqueduct in the Roseton area of the town of Newburgh. To investigate this further, DEP performed tunnel inspections from the inside by sending in an automated underwater vehicle. And what they found were two locations with significant leaks, one in the town of Wawarsing and the other in Roseton. But what caused these leaks? During construction of the aqueduct, the tunnel passed through areas of poor quality rock. To reinforce the aqueduct at these locations, a steel liner was built into the frame of the tunnel. But over time, some cracks developed at the ends of the liner and began leaking water. Engineers have determined that the Delaware Aqueduct is currently leaking up to 35 million gallons of water a day in Wawarsing and Roseton collectively. How do you repair an aqueduct that carries over half the city's water supply? Traditional repair methods would take four years. So, DEP engineers decided on an innovative approach. Bypass the larger leaking section of the aqueduct in Roston with a new tunnel and fix the leaks in Wawarsing from within the existing tunnel. By doing this, the aqueduct will only need to be shut down for approximately eight months, a solution that saves time and money. Historically, the Catskill Aqueduct had the capacity to deliver almost 660 million gallons of water per day. But over time, this has been reduced because of biofilm, a harmless, naturally occurring layer of microorganisms along the aqueduct's interior. Though thin, the rough surface of the biofilm has slowed the flow of water through the aqueduct. By physically removing the biofilm, DEP will be able to increase the flows in the aqueduct. The water supply system is dynamic, as water constantly flows into and out of the reservoirs. During normal operations, water in the reservoirs is transported to the city via aqueducts, with some water releasing into the receiving rivers and streams. However, temporarily shutting down the Delaware system changes how the reservoirs operate. The Delaware system will need to release water while the city relies more heavily on the Catskill and Croton system reservoirs. First, in the months before the shutdown, the city will rely more heavily on the Delaware system for its drinking water, 
This will create additional storage space in the Delaware system reservoirs to catch runoff while also reducing the likelihood of passing water through their spillways. Using more water from the Delaware system will also allow the Catskill and Croton systems to fill up so they can reliably provide drinking water to the city during the Delaware aqueduct shutdown. Once the Catskill and Croton systems are full, the Delaware Aqueduct will be taken out of service and the Catskill and Croton systems will be used as the main sources of water for the city. There will be visible changes to the watersheds during the temporary shutdown. Most noticeable will be fluctuating water levels in the Croton watershed, where water levels in its small but numerous lakes and reservoirs will likely be lower than normal as more water is drawn to supplement the absent Delaware system supply. When the connection of the bypass tunnel is complete, the operation of all the city's reservoirs will return to normal. This process has been carefully planned and modeled to ensure that the dynamic relationships between the reservoir systems continue to meet our supply needs while protecting the rivers and streams that depend on them. Concurrent with these efforts, DEP is implementing a citywide demand management plan to reduce water use. The plan includes retrofits of city-owned properties, initiatives like the Toilet Replacement Program for residential properties, collaborations with private sector organizations, water distribution upgrades, and reviewing and revising plans to prepare for a drought and other water shortages. By reducing the city's overall demand, these water-saving practices will directly offset supply needs from other sources during the temporary shutdown. Maintaining the city's water supply infrastructure is critical to the future of New York City and the metropolitan region. The women and men of the New York City Department of Environmental Protection are working hard to ensure that our pristine water continues to flow through the many miles of tunnels and pipes to your faucets for generations to come.